Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Good, good. good. All right, uh, welcome to our presentation on engaging students with customized Linux images for cybersecurity training. Uh, my name is Adam Ramirez, and this is my sister. Marie Ramirez. And I know it's a long title, but it's definitely, it's definitely worth it. All right, so for, uh, for, day, for today's agenda, we're, it's gonna include a quick background about ourselves, uh, and then an overview about what Cyber Patriot is and the training basics for the competition and cyber defense in general. Since our customized Linux, I mean, since our customized VMs are based on our experience with Cyber Patriots, um, this will provide some background of the the use of VMs, and then we'll talk about the benefits of customizing virtual machines and our approach to customizing or themifying the VMs, uh, just to help uh, students get more excited, and engage about learning about cybersecurity, and then uh, we'll give a quick demo, which will be demonstrated by Marie, and then we'll open up for some questions at the end. So, uh, so uh, my name is Adam Ramirez. I am going to be an incoming freshman at UC Merced. I'm going to be majoring in applied mathematics, concentrating in computer science. I've been in cybersecurity and uh, cyber patriots for about seven years. Uh, I actually founded the cybersecurity club at my high school, and I was president for about three years. Uh, besides all the computer stuff, I actually do enjoy playing basketball and volleyball. And uh, I, pub I published about three articles about cybersecurity uh, through Project Cyber. Uh, the handle right there is, uh, for the Instagram is right there, so. Hi everyone, I am Marie Ramirez and I'm a rising senior at Bishop Almont High School and I have been a part of Cyber Patriots for six years. This upcoming year will be my seventh year. And I am now the current president of the cybersecurity club that Adam founded at our school. And I have also published three articles as well in cybersecurity, and I've also competed in local cyber patriot competitions as well as NCL, which is the National Cyber League. And besides cybersecurity, I like volleyball and photography. I'm actually part of the head yearbook staff at my school. And I, yeah. <laughs> uh, so does anybody know what cyber patriot is? All right, so we got a few. Uh, well, this is going to be a little refresher, and for those who don't know, well, Cyber Patriot is a nationwide cyber defense uh, competition for that's open for high school students and middle school students. Uh, recently, they just added Canada, uh, UK, Australia, and Saudi Arabia, uh, and it helps train students on cybersecurity concepts with hands-on training uh, to inspire them to pursue careers such as in, uh, to pursue careers in cybersecurity and also in STEM. It focuses on cyber defense, which means no hacking. So there's a zero tolerance for hacking uh, through Cyber Patriots. And Cyber Patriots also helped both of us understand what VMs are and actually how to use them. So uh, we are in our script today with customizing VMs, it, uh, Cyber Patriot definitely contributed a lot to that. So now I'm gonna break down a Cyber Patriot competition to demonstrate some of the key components using cyber camps that we have participated in the past and that helped inspiring that helped inspire us in creating the script. So usually a Cyber Patriot competition is a six hour nationwide event that where about fifty two hundred teams consisting of one to five students per team work on various virtual machines. And um, points are given by finding these vulnerabilities and securing the system settings and answering some of the forensic questions. But points can also be subtracted if misconfiguration occurs, such as removing an authorized user. And their goal at the end of the competition is to gain 100 points per virtual image. And each of the VMs include a readme file that describes a scenario, usually about a company with computing policies, such as password policies, authorized software, and authorized users and admins. And each of the teams are given three VMs that are installed using VMware Player, a Linux system, a Windows desktop, and Windows server. The main point here is that there are standalone virtual machines and used and must be secured. And here's a graphic of the, that we have provided that represents the different challenges given at each competition round. But here our talk today, we're gonna to be focusing on just the Linux image. But also in addition to these three images, there's also a Cisco Packet Tracer challenge where students are given a network layout and network-based challenges to configure and routers and switches. Plus there is also a security network challenge which is, which is an online-based quiz. So now we're gonna move on into what is the cyber training uh, through the Linux 
through the Linux image. So since we actually are presenting at a Linux conference, I think it's uh, it's pretty obvious what uh, image we're going to do a demo on is going to be Windows. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually going to be on Linux. Um, we do have a customized Windows image, but we haven't fully automated the whole process yet. So let's uh, continue talking about the Linux image. Uh, we do we did have a couple of goals in mind when creating it. Uh, first and foremost, we wanted to create it as close as possible to the Cyber Patriot competition, since we'll, since this will be used as a training tool. Uh, for instance, like typically in the Cyber Patriot competition, they don't really use the latest version of Ubuntu. Uh, like for it, this year, actually, we participated. They use Ubuntu 18 when actually Ubuntu 22 was the latest version. Uh, second was the use of the VMware player. Although we can use uh, VirtualBox, we actually encountered many problems, uh, such as the hard disk devices. So sometimes, but sometimes we actually have no choice but to use VirtualBox. Um, another instance of why we why we only have to use VirtualBox is uh, when we volunteer at some schools, they only have computer labs full of Macs, and through VMware player, you actually have to pay if you have a Mac. But through Windows, it's actually free. So that's why, uh, that's why we had to use VirtualBox. So that's a problem we encountered. Um, going back to the VMs, the VMs are uh, zipped up. Uh, they're in zipped up files, and we usually install them on lab desktops, uh, similar to the competi competition and training labs. And lastly, our script sticks to the similar vulnerabilities or challenges provided by uh, the Cyber Patriot competition, as we mentioned before. So. The cyber page of def uh, cyber defense. So we list uh, some basic cyber defense vulnerabilities or challenges. So the first one, the first one we have is the OS updates. You always have to make sure the OS is up to date. And then the next one is the firewall. Usually during the competition, the firewall is turned off, so we have to make sure it's always turned on. Then as you move on, uh, move on, uh, we got the local security policies, which include password policies and the lockout policies. Then we have the software management. Uh, usually competitors have to check if the software is appropriate for each scenario that's given. And then we have the user account management. Uh, competitors usually have to check if each user is authorized. Uh, by that, it means um, usually you have to add or delete users. Then we have the unauthorized software. Uh, usually Cyber Patriot is big on deleting uh, hacking tools. So Nmap or Wireshark would usually be installed, so we have to delete that or uninstall it. So our approach to uh, customizing a Linux VM, uh, being students ourselves, uh, we kind of understand how students think and learn. So personally, for me, if these uh, VMs were actually available, I think they would be a They would actually benefit me in the long run because I could, if I could relate some of my favorite TV shows with learning, uh, I think that would uh, help me a, a great ton. So, so trying to gauge what students are into is a good first step into like addressing this whole situation. Uh, after several years in Cyber Patriot and using Linux, we created some of the things we can customize uh, from our learning. I was first inspired by theming a VM when I actually installed one from an online. Uh, yeah, from online, it was actually themed uh, Walking Dead, so that really inspired me. So I was like, why not just create our own script using it so we can customize it? So once we understood what can be customized, we then we then generated a list of settings that can be customized. We brainstormed and thought about how can we do that. So we first customized them manually using the GUI and through the command line, but we realized like that was way too inefficient. So after through after some Google searches and uh, talking to our mentors about this, uh, we decided to challenge, our ho uh, challenge ourselves and actually try to automate this whole process. So the cyber camp training. So during each training session, uh, each student is given a VMware player that is installed in their PC. And we usually give them the zipped up file that they would have to unzip themselves and uh, open up the image. But sometimes you actually walk through it with them just so they can get used to it. Uh, we want them to like walk through this whole process and let them learn. So once the VMs are up and running, we usually walk through some exercises using the GUI and the command line. And as we mentioned earlier, we give them challenges that are similar to the competition. So. So why so why are we customizing the VM? So. It's simple. Kids have the attention span of about 10 seconds until they get bored or distracted. Uh, in supporting several camps, we noticed that kids were often distracted as the coaches were presenting their material, and the st they were not engaged, especially if the material was challenging for them or they weren't able to comprehend it. 
Usually I would see kids bring up games on, online while the teacher was actually teaching. So I was like, we ha there was a problem there. So I was like, how can we address this? So coming up with customizing the VMs, this is like, I think this is one way we can address this situation. But not only does it help the teachers, it could also help the students itself because it allows the students to associate things that they're familiar with, with tasks they're actually learning. So one example is my favorite TV show right now or currently is uh, Stranger Things. So having an image themed as Stranger Things, I think that would help me. As I mentioned before, the Walking Dead theme actually really caught my attention. So the script can be a great teaching tool for teachers. For example, they can use the script to tailor the VM to the latest movie or TV show that the students are talking about. So the customizations that we made, uh, the most obvious one is the theme background. Uh, this is obvious because once the kids uh, start the VM up and they log into the user, this, they see the wallpaper first, that they see the background. So if they see the background, it's all themed out, I think that would catch the, their attention right away. And then the next we have the host name, that's just a little additional detail that we added. And the, the user accounts with passwords, some weak and others complex, this is another big one, because when students um, see, they get excited when they see um, the characters that they know actually listed as each user. So it gets them pumped up and talking. So next we have the unauthorized software. As I mentioned before, um, this is usually like hacking tools, uh, Cyber Patriot. This is more like a Cyber Patriot thing. Just uh, make sure they want to delete the hacking tools. Then you have the scenario, aka the readme uh, file. This is a really big one because this sets up the whole story, the whole narrative of how the competition is and how it's going to be like. Uh, the the readme actually sets up the scenario for the, uh, for the competition. It presents students with uh, company policies, the authorized users, the administrators, and the password. So we basic, for the README, we use a template for Madlib style where we fill in the blanks with the information uh, for the theme file. And then we have the unauthorized files uh, and the media files. This is just another thing where the students have to check if each game file is appropriate for each scenario. So they would have to delete the media files or the game files. So yeah. So customizing with Python. Why do we, why do we choose Python? So we chose Python for, uh, for a few reasons. First, we wanted to expand our experiences in Python. And it's actually one of the most popular po uh, programming languages right now. So we're like, why not we just decide? We actually considered shell scripting, but we were just more comfortable with Python. So as we started with our script, we actually set ourselves a few constraints. Uh, first one is being uh, no external modules, a standalone script. Basically, that means we wanted the script to have basic, uh, like no, we didn't want to have any fancy modules. We just wanted default modules. Because when we go to volunteer, when we volunteer at different schools, uh, some of the schools actually block outgoing traffic. So uh, some of the fancy modules will get blocked. So it wouldn't really run well. So we just wanted to keep it default and simple, which brings me to the next point, uh, keeping it simple. We just wanted simple commands just to like have one command to change the wallpaper, change the uh, add users, delete users, and uh, just like that. And then another one that I don't think it's on there, but uh, to run through the command line as root, because if we, if we didn't run through the command line as root, this would be, you're changing the system. So this is something that you would want to uh, run as root. So some features we added, uh, a small list of com a command line options. This allows people a few options to customize. Uh, and then the next one is a big one, is the use of the YAML configurations to define each theme. Uh, does anyone know what YAML stands for? Yeah, YAML, what YAML is? Well, YAML is actually a recursive acronym that stands for YAML and a markup language. It's a common text-based uh, human-readable format for configuration files. Uh, the reason why we chose this format was because it's actually popular among many tools such as Ansible and Docker, and plus we just wanted to be, uh, a, a chance to learn more about it. Uh, we'll show an example of the YAML format in the next slides. Uh, first, we have the script layout, we have the make theme.py layout. So this is how it's going to be laid out when you run the script. We have the configuration directory. Then as we move down, we have the log directory. Then we have the theme directories. This is one, this one's important because it lists all of the themes that are available. So the themes that we chose as an example are Among Us, Avengers, Justice League, and Stranger Things. And then the Stranger Things is the one we're actually going to be using for the demo. And then as you see below here, we have the readme template file. Uh, the wallpaper image, and the theme, uh, theme configuration, so the YAML format. 
So right here, this is the command line options. This shows uh, the options that are available in the script. The first one we have the, the, well, the main option is the theme, which actually specifies which theme is going to be applied. Then as we move down, we have the list option. It just lists the supported themes. And then the last two are the standard verbose mode and the help, the, the, it displays the help. So yeah, that's simple. Then here's the sample YAML file that I mentioned before. Uh, this YAML file actually describes the Stranger Things. As we mentioned earlier, YAML is a text-based, human-readable format. So uh, YAML, this is one reason why we chose it, because it's actually like just easier to read. We just have the host name, the theme name. We just have all the bunched up. Then as we move down, we have all the users. We have the admins, and then we have the regular users with their passwords and usernames. And then uh, we have the software that's installed as we scroll more down. Uh, we have MAP, which is a hacking tool, so students would have to delete that. Then we have Wireshark, Samba, Tree, Audit D. Then we have the media, uh, media files that are downloaded. Uh, this one was just a test one, so they would have to delete it. Then the services that are running, the FTP, SSHD, and Samba. And then the README. This is, um, as you can see, it has company, services, and software. This is where the Madlet uh, style template comes in. So for the company, we put Hawkins Corporation. That's just one of that's probably that's part of the um, theme. And then we have the uh, critical services. These are the services that have to be running is SSHD and Postfix. And then we have the software, which is just Firefox. Uh, so this diagram that we have right here shows the workflow of how the make uh, theme.py actually works, the whole script. So as I mentioned before, we have the theme files of the YAML, the YAML format. So that's just basically the ones that we showed before, which has uh, Stranger Things, Among Us, uh, DC, Marvel. Then once we run the Python script in the, co in the command line, it, ex it executes these, all these commands. So it sets the background. Uh, wallpaper, it says the host name, it installs the software, it creates the users, and then it creates the readme, and it also creates the admin accounts. So we'll show. So now we're going to move on to the custom uh, customization demo, which would be demonstrated by Marie. So. <laughs> so now I'm going to be starting with a VM with the base install of Ubuntu and run the script. So as mentioned in the presentation, this is a command line script. So and so now I'm going to run the command.
So now as you can see, running the script requires root or administrator privileges using sudo. So sudo allows you to run the commands with these privileges. So now I'm going to run it using sudo. So now let's go over the options that are displayed on the screen. So the first one is the help, which shows obviously the help, as you can see. And then the next is the main one, is the theme option. This specifies the theme that it needs to be applied. And then we have the undo option, which undoes the specified theme that you applied. And then the list option, which shows all the available themes. And lastly is the verbose mode, how many of you guys know what verbose means? Well, yeah, it's used for debugging and to show all the different information. So now that we have seen the available options, I'm going to run through the commands. So first, let's run through the list command. So as you can see on the screen, it shows the supported themes. Um, Justice League, Stranger Things, Among Us, and Avengers. But today we're going to be using the Stranger Things. And so now I'm going to type the command to apply the theme. Let me clear it really quick. So as the script is running, the output of the commands is displayed on the terminal. And it's adding all the users. Yeah. Yeah, there's an error. Well, you can see right here, the background actually changed the wallpaper, so that's like some of it actually went through. But just okay. So let's go through the users to see if they added. Well, as you can see, it added all the users from the show. And also, we added some non-users so that the st when the students see this, they're going to have to delete them, and then which will, they, which will gain points for them. And there would be a readme file that would, write, that would show up right there, and that would show like all the company name, all the users, and their passwords, and all the software that needs to be running or installed if they haven't been installed yet. So I'm going to log out and enter in as the default user, which is Hopper. <laughs> Bear with us.
I'm going to zoom in so you guys are able to see what's on the screen. That's much better. So yeah, so you see the wallpaper that has been implemented and the readme file. So I'm going to open it up and go through all the changes that I made. So as you go through the README, the first thing that you will see is Hawkins Incorporation, which is the company name that we mentioned. And then you would see all the authorized administrators and authorized users. And you obviously see, see that their passwords are very weak. So the students, they would have to change their passwords to make them more complex. And then at the bottom, the very bottom, you'll see the critical services as a SSHD and Postfix. So these are the softwares that would have to be running in the image. And if not, then they would have to be installed. And I think that's it for the demo. So here's the, it's now, we have, we're going to open up for questions now. So uh, also, we uploaded the script uh, to my GitHub right there, as you can see, just right there. And then if you want to contact us, here's our emails. So.